Hello everybody, I'm Ard and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today, we are going to do something I have been meaning to do for months. It's base cleanup time. And what I mean, of course, is cleaning up this disaster. That is my Industrial Craft 2 nuclear reactor. And what we're going to do is actually remove it from here entirely, because this is just a mess. And honestly, I have enough power to power my matter fabricator at this point, so that's the first step we're going to do. So what we're going to do is move this out and actually automate it, because that's one of the things I did not do while setting this up, to get it producing more plutonium to the point where I can turn this into a plutonium breeder reactor. But the first step is to get on my hazmat suit and rip all of this out, and then hook power back up to my matter fabricator. All right, so I ripped out the reactor, so I've got a little bit more space to work with back here. And I upgraded the cables to the Ultimate from the Elite, for the, I have the top tier universal cables in here. I've got a hardened energy cell in here now, because this can transmit only 40,000 a tick, which is quite a lot of power, honestly. But again, we're generating several hundred thousand now, and I'm only using, I want to say 16,000 for my void miner and laser base, and then whatever the digital miner is using on top of that. So we've got tons. And it's just, this is just keeping it buffered so that it doesn't drain my whole power. So we've got that going for us. As you can see, my fabricator is now going significantly faster from what it was before. I'm sure I could speed it up more if I actually built more of the recyclers, but uh, I, I, it doesn't matter. I don't need to. If I increase my power, I can always replace this energy cell with the next tier up and just speed it up faster that way too. So. Uh, this is, this is an improvement at least, so now this will just permanently run and I won't have to continually refill it. What this however means is, I guess I finally have to go dig this hole down here and actually put in the uh, power area I was intending to before. Guess I better start digging. Oh wait, except I, I already did this off camera because this would have been boring to watch me dig a series of holes. So this area over here is going to be where I'm going to put my farming compact machines, all of the ones that generate outputs and don't generate power or anything over here, just so I have more room to work with the piping. I obviously haven't finished it up because I'm not doing it today, but I dug it out just so I have a spot to work with later. Over here, you'll see that the bulk of this is filled in with a giant square. Well, that's because this is all reinforced stone from industrial craft. And we want the reinforced stone to create a bunker in case automating this somehow causes my reactor to explode. I don't think it's likely the reactor design I'm using is actually really stable, but you know, I might screw things up and just in case, and we might as well show how it works just for the sake of it. So the way that this works is you can use the reinforced blocks or anything that is actually like heavily blast resistant. I think uh, tempered, I think some of the tempered glass from uh, thermal expansion works as well as other things. The withered blocks probably work as well. Most of them will say if they're blast resistant. You need a layer four blocks deep surrounding the reactor to stop the blast from destroying anything else for the most part. So in this case, we needed an 11 by 11 by 11 cube. The vast majority of this is underground under this because I did not want to dig a hole that deep. So as you can see, there's a tiny little cube on the inside of it where the reactor is going to go. So the next step is I need to set up the reactor. Before, so I can show you how the next parts work, which means I have to go Google how the reactor gets put back together because even I can't remember it. <laughs> All right, so I've got everything in but the fuel cells now because I wanted to show the next step of this, which is to manage this with the phantom face so that we could, don't have to use a airlock of some sort with reinforced doors to try to snake cables in and out. This might still fail with the power one, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, let me show you what I mean. You start by taking your fanaries connector, shift right clicking it on the block you want it to access, which can be anything in the reactor, then coming over to your fan face and shift right clicking here, and then it's connected. Here we have an input and an output drawer that we're going to currently use for fuel rods. Um, this I can't completely finish right now. I have a filter in here to take stuff out to stop it from removing everything, but until the fuel rods get finished, I can't finish this step. But to, as an example, we can put the fuel rods in, You'll see them get taken out, and we can come over to the reactor, and you'll see that it put all of the fuel rods in, although one's missing, it's probably my ender bag. Yep, it was. And it loads everything up. It's also not currently turned on. So to get it to turn on, we're going to use a similar trick, in this case, the phantom redstone face, which works a bit differently. Instead of putting it down where we want to be able to access it, we have to put attach it to what we want to be powered by it. So in this case, we'll put it right here next to the reactor. Then we'll come back out here and slap down a lever. Right here is fine for now. We'll link the lever and we'll link the phantom face. Come back out here, flip the lever, and now the reactor is turned on. 
All right, and getting power out is similar, but it's more difficult than this makes it look. So here we have a phantom energy phase that has power coming out of it into an energy cell. All fine and dandy, right? Well, not quite because the generator generates EU power. So there's actually an MFSU sitting here with a glass fiber cable under it going into the reactor to pull power out into EU and a universal cable translating it into RF into another energy cell, which is then linked to the phantom phase. Now you need to make sure that all of the sides that aren't connected to the cable are set to output. Otherwise this phantom energy phase will not output because it counts as having the exact same sides as the other energy cell, which means this side right here can't actually output and we can't control it from here. But that's all the basic parts of the reactor now wired up to phantom faces, which is something I haven't done before. So I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. Probably gonna have to relay all this stuff out as we move into the next step, which is to automate the fuel rod production. All right, and to make the fuel rods, we have to do a few things. First, we have to be able to automate making these fuel rods, which means we're going to have to have plates coming in for both copper and iron, as well as the fuel rods themselves which require empty fuel rods, which requires more plates going through a metal former. It also requires making the enriched uranium fuel, which is just uranium-238 and tiny piles of uranium-235, which comes out of a thermal centrifuge. So we're gonna have to set up all of this. On top of that, we're also gonna have to deal with the depleted uranium fuel rods, which can be broken down in a thermal centrifuge into plutonium and uranium and a bit of iron. So. All of that is reasonable to do. We basically need three metal formers, two thermal centrifuges, and then an ore washer and a macerator to process the uranium. We're eventually gonna switch this over to uh, MOX fuel rods, which uses the plutonium, but I don't have remotely enough plutonium currently. There are other machines we could use. We could actually use nuclear craft fuels in here to do this, which would probably even be fewer machines, honestly. But I, I mean, I'm down the hole of industrial craft. We might as well do it the industrial craft way here. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, so let me go get the pieces. All right, so now I've got everything plugged in and set up and working. And I, you know, when you go film an episode about a nuclear reactor, perhaps you should wait till the reactor is out of fuel instead of having just refilled it because I had to wait a couple of hours to make sure this actually worked. But um, yeah, so this all works now. So let's take a quick look at what it does. So starting off behind the wall where I've got all the cabling hidden, there's a conduit that goes back down to a storage drawer slave that's pulling in all of the materials we need. They're on a very different channel, so you've got blue and green and purple and red for various inputs and outputs, including a trash can. The trash can's because I'm just dumping all of the byproducts because I don't need the iron and the lead and the stone dust that are coming back from that. I'm generating iron faster than I can use it normally anyways. So I just don't care if it just gets binned. I'm not gonna bother recycling it. There's just no point in reprocessing it. But coming in, very first we have a row of metal formers. The first one is the iron one and the copper one to create the plates, which then cycle up into this drawer. This drawer has the downgrade set into it, so there can only ever be one stack in here. From here, this metal former pulls out iron plates and turns them into the fuel rods, which then also come back up here. Skipping these for a minute, we come over to the macerator, which is pulling in uranium, crushing it up, pushing it into the ore washing plant, and then finally into this thermal centrifuge to create the uranium. All of that gets pushed over into the crafter along with the plates to create the enriched uranium as well as quad fuel rods. The quad fuel rods go in here the enriched uranium goes into the fluid solid caning machine, which is joined with the normal fuel rods and some water to create the, the normal fuel rods, which go back into the crafter. Then the quad fuel rods come back into here and then are piped, are piped into the reactor when these run out. When these run out, they turn into depleted uranium fuel rods, which we immediately pipe out from the phantom face into this thermal centrifuge which turns them into delicious, delicious plutonium. And then the quad fuel rods are piped back into the reactor. So now I don't have to think about this anymore. Other than the fact that I don't have a good source of uranium, um, that's gonna be a problem. I probably should set up a way to mass produce it off of uh, endstone now from the endstone essence that I'm creating, but I haven't gotten around to it yet uh, because I have 
hundreds of these fuel rods now sitting over in the crafter. We've got enough for a few days worth of operation. And there's some uranium coming in passively from the void miner and from the laser base. I did also swap the lenses out of the laser base for the lime green ones to get uh, specifically uranium at a higher rate, but it's not that big a deal because really we should just be upgrading the void miner and or creating uranium. Not a big deal. So that pretty much solves all the problems and using the phantom faces, which I haven't really used before. So I'm pretty happy with how this all turned out. Anyhow, as always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.